Hi there, it's Simon from simonwoods.com. In the September sunshine, you can probably see it uh, shining on these two bottles of different heights, of different origins, of different grape varieties. Uh, but So why am I trying them together? Well, I suppose I'd put them both in the uh, uh, aromatic white, uh, unoaked aromatic white uh, bracket. Um, and so one's from Alsace uh, and one is from Argentina. So we'll start with the Alsace one. Uh, it's uh, Hugel's uh, Gentil. Uh, gentle, gentile. I don't know. Well, we won't get into uh, in, in, into religion here. Uh, but here, w it, it, this is one of those that um, I don't think they, they call it. Uh, too many places call it Edelsvicker, but the, the idea is it's a blend of um, <laughs> premium grape varieties. It's always a blend of premium uh, grape varieties. You never see on the back on the back label a blend a blend of sub premium grape varieties. Uh, but um, yes, what does it say here? A blend of noble grapes. Well, that's a good one. Yeah, not pre not just premium, noble. Uh, gently dry, round, pleasingly aromatic. Ideal introduction to Alsace wines, or so the back label says. Let's see whether that bears out when I come to taste it. Sometimes I find myself with wines like this trying to dissect them and say, well, there's a little bit of like fat, peachy weight from the Pinot Gris, and there's a little bit of... Um, uh, perfume than from the Gewurztraminer and there's a little bit of uh, a slightly saline edge from Silvana and uh, then there's a the Riesling chipping in. Oh, it's got all those characteristics in there but I would be completely lying if I could uh, identify which grape gave, gave each particular character but it felt, feels like it's going to have this aromatic floral edge and with this um, yeah I, I said saline uh, something that uh, feels a bit more soil related uh, coming through to underpin it and then um, maybe the if there is the the, the Riesling there that there's something that's chipping in with some quite precise fruit aromas quite rounded weighty and peachy um, almost as if some of the um, uh, the grapes in there have gone have done a little bit of malolactic fermentation there's a, there's a creamy buttery edge there um, and maybe that's Pinot Blanc uh, just adding that uh, not necessarily flavour but weight and presence um, tasty wine, um, and um, it's uh, it's got. Oh, I'm trying to think how do they describe it. Gently dry. I, I like that. I would have said that there was a little bit of sweetness there, but not so much that um, it doesn't qualify for the dry category. You're allowed a certain amount of uh, of residual sugar in there, and still uh, be able to uh, to talk about it as being a dry wine. I don't think there's any uh, classic. No, there's sometimes sometimes you get on uh, on Alsace wines and the Rieslings in particular, a little scale on the back and they say where it goes from the dryness to sweetness scale. Here, one of those that I could very happily sit and drink by itself, uh, but thanks to that uh, slightly saline edge, um, food friendly. So I'm going to have another sip. I don't have any um, food to have with it. I have another wine. How will it compete? This one is uh, from Argentina and it's uh, Keiken, um, Keiken probably, uh, Terroir Series Torrentes from Salta. Uh, Keiken is the Argentinian outpost of, uh, uh, from one of the pioneers of Chilean wine really, uh, Aurelio Montes. Certainly one of the ones who, uh, when Chile uh, emerged on the international wine scene in the late 80s, early 90s, Montes was one of the labels to... Uh, uh, to get there and do their job well before before many other people, and I can't remember how long they've uh, they've they've been in Argentina. It's probably ten years now, maybe even a bit more. Definitely Torrentes. Um, it's um, in the way that Gewurztraminer is a very distinctive uh, aroma. Um, Torrentes is for is for me. Uh, if you grew grew up with, with roses, lime juice as a real. Uh, there's that aroma of uh, slightly, uh, when you've not quite diluted it sufficiently, so there's this lime cordial uh, character. Uh, it's um, Some people say, oh, it reminds them of Gewurztraminer. It's, it's, it's a different st type of, uh, uh, a, a different style of wine. Here, maybe, uh, I, th I think uh, the Gewurztraminer is capable of finer wines, uh, I think Torrentes is cap capable of more refreshing wines. This this feels to be like quite a weighty beast, thirteen and a half percent, yeah. Um, and um, so it smells, yeah. It's got this lime juice edge, uh, but there's also a richer, maybe guava, passion fruit edge too. Big, powerful, quite distinctive. And it's a problem I have with uh, some New World Gewurztraminers. 
there is this slightly bitter phenolic edge and phenolics what what that means is that they've uh, left the grapes um, the grape juice and the skins they, they press them and normally you whip the juice off straight away as soon as you press them with with uh, um, with white wine not orange wine so we're talking white wine here um, and, but they, they if, if you leave the the grape skins and juice in contact they will get more flavour, more character. The only problem is that in doing that, they will also get more tannin. And if the skins aren't uh, fully ripe, uh, then you can extract some bitterness and um, just get a little touch of that. It's um, it, it's a louder wine than the uh, the Gentil, which lives up to its name. Um, and I prefer the Gentil. I know that there's quite a few people who would actually prefer the uh, uh, the, the, the Torrentes. I have to say that in terms of grapes, uh, that if they were to disappear, I would not mourn their absence. Torrentes is quite high on my list, so uh, I, I keep looking for for for, for ones I like. Uh, and this one is sort of like it's one of those, yeah, fair enough. But um, I, uh, it's not my favourite grape. I have to be, I'll be honest, it's not my favourite grape. But um, this is a reasonable example of it. Um, but I prefer the the Hugo. See you soon.